this is the noob and in this video I'm just responding to Giano's question on the forum about directory uh, read and write uh, well let's see he says there may be occasions that a program needs to access read and write to and from files on a system I am going to assume two things one RC does not use a shell command none listed in documentation and two the directory commands would be the way to go would you please be so kind as to provide examples of how these commands can access system files thank you all right so RC basic has uh, some built-in directory functions and some built-in file read and write functions and stuff and I am going to quickly but thoroughly try to go over all of them so first let's just create a new project using RC basic studio because I'm it's the only way I can uh, actually improve it so um, I'm going to call this tutorial and I just create a f new folder for this on my desktop. And uh, RC Basics uh, commands are cross platform, so this is uh, going to work on. Uh, Windows or Linux. Uh, I'll leave. I'll leave this stuff blank. And OK. And by default, new projects will just create this hello world thing. We can go and get rid of it. Um, and now we'll go up to help and go to RC Basic documentation. All right. And. So uh, let's go to directories. I am going to go over file IO and stuff too because it's kind of related. So I might as well go over all of it. But I'm going to start with directories uh, since this is shortest and it's kind of more what the question was asking. So uh, I'm not going to go over these in order because really the most important of the directory functions is dir, which it returns the current working directory, and change dir, which changes the current working directory. So those two functions basically you can like either get or set the directory where your program runs out of. Um, so right now uh, the when you run a program by default its current direct working directory will be the folder where that program is which in this case would be uh, where this tutorial folder is on my desktop uh, so this would be the current working directory right here and I'm gonna create um, a couple of folders here um, um, temp uh, underscore one and I'll create a new folder called temp underscore two just to demonstrate uh, what it looks like when you're changing your current work directories so when by default if we don't do anything else uh, this folder right here should be my current working directory so Let's just go ahead and see if that's the case. So I'm just going to do print. And uh, dir is a string function. It just returns a string. And it doesn't take any argument, so you can put it with the parentheses or without the parentheses or even without the dollar sign. You don't necessarily need to have that. It's just something I usually just put in there to distinguish between a string and a number function. And now we're just going to run this and we see um, the tutorial folder well inside the tutorial folder inside of the tutorial project which is the same folder here so this is our current working directory 
and now let's say we want to change it to um, uh, change it to temp one. Um, we're gonna go and just first of all just print dir so we can see what the dir is before we change it, uh, and then change dir to um, temp one. Now, um, normally, if 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 uh, well, not, not normally, but if you wanted to specify a folder at a location that's not relative uh, to your current working directory, you could specify the entire file path. So on Windows, it would be like C colon slash you know whatever. Uh, on Linux, it would be forward slash you know I don't know home forward slash you know you know whatever. Um, but yeah, you can specify absolute uh, directories, and you um, or or you could just not specify the absolute directory. You know, default to a relative location. So we are going to change this to uh, temp one, and then we're just going to print it again. Um, well, I'll, you know what? I'm gonna just it's a quick way of printing a new line, and then. Uh, print new location and dir which if you don't don't know this is how you would uh, separate uh, like you can add multiple output to one print statement and just separate like that um, I'm gonna call this original location to distinguish it And let's run this. So we see that uh, original location is the tutorial folder in the tutorial project. The new location is the temp one inside of the tutorial inside of the tutorial project. So it is working. Um, now um, to, to move on to some of these other functions dir exists um, it it basically just returns true if it exists false if it doesn't so um, easiest way to show that is with this first one let's see we're just going to ch um, uh, say print well we'll just do if dir exists because normally you're going to be doing this inside of an if uh, you uh, you could just store it in a variable though if you want to but uh, if there exists temp one then print temp one folder was found And if, and then we're going to do another if, that same if statement, but for a folder that isn't in uh, in uh, our working directory. So let's say if if uh, temp eight, you know, because we only created a temp one and temp two folder uh, right here, these two folders. Uh, so this second one will be false. So print uh, temp eight folder was found. So the second if statement is the same as the first one, but it would only print out if temp eight exists and temp eight doesn't. So we're expecting this to output temp one folder was found and this to not output. Uh, so let's run that. And we get temp one folder was found, but we didn't get temp eight. So that's uh, basically how dir exists works. Um, make dir and remove dir. These are kind of self-explanatory <laughs> as well. Um, they make a folder and then they'll delete a folder. So make dir. Uh, let's make. Uh, 
a dir called temp3. Right, and run that. And now we should see a temp3 folder in here. Yep. So now let's uh, get rid of that temp3 folder. So remove dir temp3. And we're going to, I'm just going to pit this side by side with the folder so we can see it getting deleted when our program runs. So let's go ahead and run this. And you see temp3 is gone. So that's how those functions work. Um, and uh, I saved these for last, dir first and dir next, because uh, I mean they they are not as uh, self-explanatory as the other ones. Um, these uh, follow the same naming conventions as SDL Basic, though. Um, but uh, we can like dir first and dir next. They're not really specific. I mean, they're specifically for looking at all the files inside of a directory. So if we want to list all of the files in this directory, we can first get uh, um, uh, a reference to uh, uh, the first directory it finds. So let's just say x. Well. Um, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, we'll, we'll just call it uh, file. I'll just call it file equals dir first. Let's spell this correctly. Uh, so we're going to say file equals dir first and then print file. Uh, I better make file a string. Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me, but yeah, well, say so, so. We're setting a file equal to dir first, and then it should print out the first thing listed here, which isn't always going to be like the list that's here. Um, it's depending on the operating system, so it may be main.bs as first file, or maybe temp1. You know, it could be any of these. But it'll list one of these files as the first file that the operating system is returning to our program. So let's go ahead and just print that. And in this case, this dot uh, is um, it's for the uh, <laughs> it's weird. Um, it's uh, uh, to show you what that that dot is. Uh, let's open up a command prompt and type in dir. So you see the first thing it lists is dot, and then two dots. And then it lists all the files. The the dot is for this current directory. The two dots is for the previous directory. And uh, in most cases, you can just ignore those unless you're trying to specifically list those. We care about everything after those. So if we do, um, like print dir next, it'll print the le next file listed, which will probably be the two dots. Yeah. And then after that, if we print dir next again, it will return the next file in the list uh, in this, which is main.bs. And you know you can use this to look at all the files in a directory. The simplest way to do that is like set a file, um, set a um, a variable equal to the first file found with dir first, and then say while file is uh, not equal to blank because if there's nothing else returned by dir next, dir next will be blank. So we're saying while file is not blank, so while there is something in file, um, we're going to say file, uh, well, do something with that file name. So we'll just list all the stuff in the file. So um, say we'll just list all the files and then we will set file equal to dir next and it'll just keep on setting file this file equals dir next 
will just keep on setting it to the next file like that the operating systems return turning as part of our directory in this list until it's blank and this should just list all the files so let's run that and we get a list of all the files in the directory and that is uh, basically how uh, dir first and dir next works um, now we're just going to quickly go over file input as well well file io um, specifically uh, I'm not going to go over all of this here because some of this stuff uh, is kind of advanced uh, use case in most people for normal programs are probably not going to be using it stuff like read byte buffer and write byte buffer read and even I guess even read byte and write byte most of the time you probably won't need that unless you specifically are trying to read a binary format so most of the time you're only going to need file open uh, yeah file open file close read line write write line and possibly copy file remove file file exists move file and rename file and uh, elf and maybe file yeah so uh, tell and seek and free file I can't imagine most people need them um, I will go over those possibly in another time but I just feel like it would be a little bit confusing going over those right now without you know explaining why you would need to know them because if you need those you probably already know what they do um, free file is also an important function but it's not necessary so uh, let's start off with file open and free file uh, uh, I'm going to explain file open, free file, and file close all together right now because we're going to need to use them together. So file open, we, you know, we have our um, our stream that we're the designating, which is just going to be a number. Um, so, uh, like you know, most time I I would just start off with like setting stream to zero. Um, basically it's a number that identifies the file that you have open if you have multiple files open you want to assign them to different streams um, file name which is the name of the file and then mode which would be one of these down here um, unless you're dealing with binary files you only need to worry about these and to be honest most of the time you only need to deal with these two um, I will go over append as well in this, but I'm not going to go over these other ones right now because uh, they're not necessary right, uh, for if you're just reading and writing to a file. These, this will by default overwrite files though. Uh, this, um, oh actually no, this, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, it it'll, it should override it, uh, but let's go ahead and get to that before I confuse myself. So, first thing we're in this this directory right here. Let's go on ahead and just make a text file and call this hello dot text and just put some text here. Um, more text very simple text file and now we are going to use uh, create a variable we'll say f equals free file and uh, let's go and explain what free file does real quick so free file gets you the first available the stream that isn't assigned to an open file already um, it's not necessary to use this though it's there as a helper but if you want to just manually assign your files to specific numbers yourself you could just do set f equal to zero or one or whatever but I'm just gonna use free file here 
and now we open the file so file open and f and hello dot text and we want to set one of uh, these modes we're going to just open it for input as in we want to read the file so and now our file is open um, and to close the file we would just do this file close and this stream and that's how we would open and close the file if we run this right now it would just run a program that opens this file for input and then closes it it doesn't actually do anything so now let's just um, to make um, a program that reads that file and just outputs its contents so now I'm going to go into explaining EOF real quick EOF will return true if you've if the end of the file is reached and it's a good way when you read through a file to make sure that you're not trying to read past the end of the file so <clears throat> best way to do this is like while not EOF and then the stream you're trying to check the, uh, in the file on there and this will just keep on looping while we haven't read the end of, to the end of the file and we want to read each line in a file so we're going to use read line returns the current line in a file and the only thing that you need to pass to this is the string it returns a string so <clears throat> we can store this in a string variable or we can just print it out I'm just gonna print it out for here so print read line uh, and I'll say F and this is just going to read each line in a file uh, it's going to read each line in a file and then outputs it that read line using print so let's go ahead and run this and it's got some text and more text so which was what I put in that file earlier and that's basic file input now let's say I wanted to uh, open a file for output so uh, I'm going to create a file called hello2.txt and now I just want to write some uh, uh, output some stuff to that file. I'm going to change this text input to text output and to write to a file you have two functions you have write and then you have write line. Uh, the difference between these two functions is this uh, function will add the end of line character to the end of your line this function won't other than that they basically do the same thing so uh, if if you um, just want to like you know write a, a line on each output you could just use write line I'll do that here and I'll say F and like say this is a test and I'll add another line uh, right line hello world so um, and since this file doesn't exist it'll create this file and it'll write these two lines to the file and then it closes the file so let's run that and we see over here it created that file I'm gonna open that real quick and there are the two lines uh, I just output here All right. and uh, what else did I say I was going to cover um, that covers input output um, I may cover this uh, the buffer and reading and writing bytes in another video but it's something I don't expect you know a lot of people who are just trying to get some simple input and output from a file to be using it's for reading binary um, data it's still useful these functions are extremely useful it's just I, I don't think that this is the video to go over them um,
So I will go over copy file, remove file, uh, like basically these copy file, remove file, file exists, move file, all of those. Uh, so let's start with copy file. Uh, this should be kind of obvious what this does, but it makes a copy of your file. So I'm just going to do copy file. Uh, we'll copy hello, oops, and these each of these arguments to copy files as a string. So the first argument is the file you want to copy, which I want to copy hello dot hello two dot text, and then the f uh, second one is the location you want to copy to, and that includes the file name. So I just want to copy it to this current location and just call it hello three dot text. So this should create a hello three dot text, which is a copy of hello two dot text. And let's run that. And it created hello three, which should have. This, this is hello2 and this is hello3 so hello3 is a copy of hello2 and that's copy file uh, next one is remove file which you know this will just delete the file so let's do remove file uh, hello2.txt we'll get rid of hello2 and run that And it got rid of hello too. That's all I need to say about that. Um, file exists. It does the same thing as dir exists, but for files. So, you know, uh, if file exists, uh, hello dot text, then print. Hello, oops, hello dot text was found. And run that. And it does find hello dot text. Now let's just give it a file that doesn't exist. Let's just call this HLO. And let's see if it outputs anything and it didn't output anything which is what we wanted and that's file exists um, then we got move file which I'll be real <laughs> move file and rename file do the same thing um, because essentially on any operating system moving a file and renaming a file is the same operation uh, so um, I'm and you you notice here that it it shows the same arguments. Uh, I'll I'll run both functions, but they do the same thing. So let's start with move file, and we're gonna move uh, file uh, hello three dot text. Uh, oops and we'll move it to the same location but we'll call it hello4.txt and we'll do that and now you see hello3 became hello4 uh, now let's just do a rename so rename file and we'll rename hello4.txt to hello5 and you see it became hello5 um, and the last one is file length uh, returns the size of the file in bytes um, so let's just, we'll just print out the length of uh, hello.txt and run that and this is the length of the file in bytes which should match uh, if you go to properties look at the file should match yet yeah, 27 bytes 27 so
and that is uh, all of uh, file out well minus the tail uh, seek and these buffer functions which I can explain in another video if you know somebody's into I might do it in another video because you know there's uh, using this in combination with other stuff is how you would be able to like for instance read uh, other data formats uh, that are not necessarily supported by the loading functions in RC basic um, but that's it for all the directory and file IO functions I'm gonna take everything from this video and just try to make a huge example with like uh, uh, some explanations on what each function does but I think that's it for this explanation uh, uh, see you in the next video